Hey folks, Sandro here, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about a um, Japanese creator who was uh, summoned by the Japanese government to talk about uh, the future of manga, and this article is very, very interesting and is being covered uh, by other YouTubers because of what it represents and basically what it uh, what it's talking about or what they talked about with the Japanese government and the creator of this one manga basically was that here in North America, like things have been being like censored all across the board. We're seeing uh, episodes of shows that came out decades or, you know, years ago. They're getting pulled because they're just too quote unquote problematic. And, uh, and now that's, it's creeping over into, uh, anime and manga. We're seeing stuff where like, uh, Sony, for example, is just banning shows. They're, they're, or they're ban they're censoring certain parts of shows. They're changing quote unquote problematic dialogue, uh, in a variety of different shows. The woke Hollywood is kind of creeping into, uh, disgustingly creeping into uh anime and they the creators here they're talking with the J uh japanese government they're saying we don't want our shit being censored when it gets uh dubbed here in the uh in the west or or not just the west in other part i'm sure that in other parts of the world they're they're censoring manga and uh anime too but uh over here in the west shit's been getting crazy recently uh, everything's bad. Like even like one of the biggest movies of all time, Gone with the Wind. They even pulled that shit down. So uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's let's take a look here. So um, here's the t uh, title: Love Hina Ma Manga Creator Discusses Manga's Freedom of Expression with Japanese Government by Daryl Harding, and this is on Crunchyroll.com. Uh, and it says UQ Holder and Love Hina Manga Creator. Uh, I've never read either of those, just for the record. Uh, Ken Akamatsu Ken Akamatsu tweeted on June 29th he'd recently been summoned by the Japanese national government to discuss manga and how it can succeed in the next 10 years. So um, interesting thing here. Uh, I'm sure that many of you are aware with the age of technology, we're seeing like video games, we're seeing books, we're seeing movies. They're getting condensed into like streaming platforms and basically entertainment platforms. You know, people uh, just aren't buying books like they used to. Um, and maybe one of the reasons they were talking about how manga is failing and how it can succeed in the next 10 years. I, when I was a kid, I used to buy uh, Shonen Jump, which was a magazine uh, from Japan that they would translate over here to English. And uh, I think Konami, may, I might be wrong on that. I think Konami might be the ones who did that. Uh, could be mistaken, but uh, what what was really what would always catch my eye is I was a big Yu-Gi-Oh player. So whenever I would see these books, it's like you buy this fifteen dollar book, and then it'd have this like super rare card or whatever that you know you wouldn't just be able to get. And uh, so I was, periodically, I would be buying these Show and Jumps just for the Yu-Gi-Oh card a lot of times. And uh, I remember buying the very last issue that was ever printed. I believe it was, it had the wing drag. No, there was like a promotional card, a promotional obelisk, the Tormentor that was like signed by, I think, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, if I'm not mistaken. And then the very last issue of Shonen Jump was the wing dragon of Ra, uh, which was also signed by the, I think it was the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh or the original illustrator of the Egyptian gods, uh, one of the two. And, um, and then what they said was, hey, if you like show and jump, we're no longer printing these magazines. You guys can go buy it on the website. So in, they, they, got, they just dropped, they stopped printing the books and they made it, you had to go online to get the manga. And uh, so if you, so, if you look online, the price of like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll look, hold on, I'll, I'll uh, find a thing here. Price of obelisk, raw, and slifer cards. Let's see here. Showing jump. Yeah, so because, hold on. <laughs> yeah, so here's the cards. Uh, let's see. 
Amazon. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, this is the one I have here. Uh, I have that. I, I actually have two copies of that. If you're wondering how I got two copies, uh, I went to the public library. They happen to have a copy of the show and jump. I just took that shit right out of the library. <laughs> uh, so I have two obelisks and then I have this. Uh, wow. So I have a card. It doesn't say the price of how much the obelisk is over here. It says 1099. I paid 15 bucks for the show. Um, I paid 15 bucks for my, uh, my show and my show and jump magazine there. Um, and so that raw is $14.99. Somebody over here is selling it for $45.09. But then if you look at Slifer, where's Slifer? You look at Slifer and it's $112. And so every because it was printed in the books, everybody who saw that it was kind of like the last couple issues of Show and Jump ever being printed, everybody bought the books and the cards, right? But then when uh when show and jump switched over to uh and that's a nice artwork right there uh yeah and there's the little sig you can see the signature that's what i was thought i think it was signed by like the original creator of Yu Gi Oh or the one of the artists uh who did the artwork for the wing from the original egyptian god cards i think or maybe he was an anime artist i, I can't or a manga artist i, I don't freaking know <laughs> i don't flip a no but uh yeah, the reason this ended up being so uh, costly was because in the first month, it, you so basically you got obelisk, slifer, or obelisk and raw, and then if you wanted, if you wanted to get a subscription on the Show and Jump website, they would for the first month they would give you slifer, and I'm assuming that so few people must have signed. You know, like I feel like it, it was a new platform, and people there were a lot of people who were like hesitant to like. Maybe if we don't support the online show and job website, then they'll go back to printing the books, which I don't think they ever did. So the what I think uh, there's now even an app, the show and jump app. I think uh, I'm not sure if they send you Yu-Gi-Oh cards though, or posters and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, so if you subscribed in that first month, you would get Slifer. So basically, you know, this guy, this gentleman here, was talking about how. Where is it? They discussed with the government how manga can succeed in the next 10 years. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a tough road ahead when uh, manga, <laughs> they aren't printing a lot of these things in, uh, in actual books anymore. They're just it's subscription technologies kind of just come in and just psh, smashed everything up here. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. I, I wanted, uh, there's other things I want to talk about with this. Uh, Ak Akamatsu has been involved as an informal advisor for the Japanese government for the past on matters relating to manga for a creator's perspective. There's his Japanese tweet. I, I have no idea what it says. That uh, I mean, like, I can't read that, but here's what it says. This month, I was invited to participate in a House of, House of Counselors witness question, questioning session. But instead, a member of the Diet Japanese government asked me, what measures are needed for Japanese manga? Wait, what measures are needed for Japanese manga need to survive in? I think they translated that wrong. Uh, need to survive in the world. So basically, like, what what's it going to take for manga to survive? And he replied, first and foremost, freedom of expression. And why that's super important. Woke Hollywood taking over over here. I was already talking about earlier how you know. Uh, gone with the wind all these types of things man they're, they're just they're, they keep one thing after another they keep pulling them they keep censoring they just keep destroying all of these amazing works they redub them over they don't even like you know if there's a quote-unquote problematic line they just psh, gone they uh they also change the dialogue to make it more feminist sometimes uh whole bunch of websites doing i think is it crunchyroll that dubs it or like I know Sony, I, I think Crunchyroll dubs some of them, don't, don't they? Or I, I, I'm not 100. percent I don't want to accuse them, but uh, some of those is it Funimation? Funimation, Funimation, it's Funimation. Um, they there's a whole bunch of these things where like they would censor like they all kinds of shit because apparently we you know it was just too insensitive for Western audiences like. 
Hell no, I'll, I'll watch that shit. <laughs> I don't want the works being censored. I want to see what these people were actually uh, writing and talking and showing and depicting, you know? I want to see what they were doing. I don't want it to be censored and changed and altered. And uh, compared to other countries, Jap sorry, I'll jump back in here. Uh, uh, so he wanted freedom of, exp of expression, but like, good luck getting that here in the West. Like, I we need it though. We need we need this. We need the, the Japanese government should utterly just make a law that says like, no company in the West can alter the you know the manga and the anime. They they need to do something like that. Um, and uh, Hollywood, their Hollywood and these psycho leftists. They have a very tough time uh, getting in on the Japanese culture because they, I don't know, I feel like the Japanese are overall more conservative than we are, uh, which is uh, not a bad thing at all. And uh, they just kind of like, they, they don't take any of this shit. Like, <laughs> they, and they, I, I don't think they, uh, the Japanese also, they, they're not too big on like other cultures. Like, if you look at their manga and stuff, you rarely ever see like, um, I don't know you're not going to see like a canadian or like i'm a canadian but <laughs> you, you rarely ever see like other cultures depict depicted like think about like naruto and like mo most of them are just like from their like a town a fictional town but then they're just you know it's like you'll find like 30 i guess they're coded as asian characters and then you'll have like one black character and uh the leftists over here don't like that kind of shit they want more diversity uh, whereas, like, the Japanese focus more on, like, uh, you know, they, they don't really care about the culture, which is a good thing. They they focus on the storytelling first. Storytelling first. And uh, that's what we need. We really need it over here. Um, and uh, let's finish up the article. But, yeah. Uh, compared to other countries, Japan's forte is freedom of creativity. Yeah. And, and like I said, we, we could really use some of that over here in America and Canada. However, with foreign platforms becoming more and more dominant, I would like to avoid a situation where Japanese works are regulated by foreign standards. Exactly. Let's. I hope they do it. I hope Japan. I hope the J Japanese government sees and hears the sky out, and they put in some laws and start making Funimation and all these, you know, Sony and everything. And it's not just books, and uh, it's not just. Or sorry, it's not just manga. It's not just anime they're also doing video games and god only who knows they're probably censoring toys too like fucking toys so um i'm not happy about that at all and um yeah so all right let's keep going before let's keep going this is uh akamatsu went on to say that to preserve uh manga over the next 10 years raw manuscripts of manga series should be stored uh exhibited and monetized at a national manga center according to akamatsu all the government members in attendance agreed with the idea okay that's good now they just need to agree to that second part where the the manga and anime don't get um censored that's what we we need to see that <laughs> for real so this guy seems to have some pull with the japanese government maybe we maybe the uh, that's a reality that's coming soon uh, and uh, in the past, Akamatsu spearheaded the doujin mark for the cover of manga volumes, showing that the original creator of the series approved of the series being used for fan works. The first series to use the mark on the first printing was Akamatsu's own UQ holder. So yeah, uh, I want to see it. I absolutely want to see it. I want to see Japan make laws uh, saying that they shouldn't be, have their work censored. Uh, I think it would be great if, like, I don't think the liberal, here we have Justin Trudeau, I don't think he's ever going to pass something where it would be like, if a, if a work is liberal or conservative, no matter what, you know, other uh, other countries couldn't censor our work either. That would be pretty uh, great. So if I ever made something worldwide I, and I put it out to, like, I don't know, like the let's have the reverse. If I put something to Japan and then they censored it, you know, that'd be great to have a law that backs that up saying, hey, you, you can't censor that or, you know, or so, I don't know if it's even possible, but <laughs> I want to see them try, you know, I want to see the J Japanese government give the shit a whirl. But uh, yeah, folks, that's all I uh, that's all I had to say on this one. Um, 
hoping for change here. Let me know in the comments below uh, if you'd like to see some change too. Uh, too much stuff getting censored. It's disgusting. And uh, we definitely need change. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, please give me a subscribe. I'm a growing YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Sandro out. Bye-bye.